Well, good morning. And welcome to Woodbridge Key Church. It's absolutely fantastic to have you with us this morning. Uh, before the summer began, there were discussions about whether we should ch- take church outside even more. Uh, so when it's a nice day, we could go outside. I have to confess, even though it's raining outside, at least it's nice and cool. I'd be half tempted to go outside today. But it's wonderful, isn't it? It's wonderful. The rain has come. Yeah. We're such Brits, aren't we? We're never happy. We're never happy with anything. It was, it was, you know, we complain endlessly about rain as soon as we get hot weather. Oh, we want it to rain again. But it's so good, isn't it? So the, the grass is beginning to look a darker shade of brown uh, rather than a lighter shade, but it's, it's, it's good. Um, welcome as well to our, our all-age service. Uh, if you've never been to Woodbridge Key Church all-age service, I'll just let you know this right from the outset. You need to get involved. Ooh. You need to get involved. It's all about interaction with one another, but also with what's going on throughout the service. So there's going to be a number of things that are going to happen. We're going to sing together. We're going to pray together. We're going to learn a memory verse together. And uh, we're going to be kicking off our new series on the way of. Um, where as we look at a number of Old Testament characters in the Bible uh, and learning a little bit about what made them who they are. So we hope that you get involved. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to say together some words. So Jacob, could you just pop that on the screen for me, please? And I'd like you all to invite you all to stand, please. Now, we're going to do it the way we always do it, because I quite like it when we build it up. So we're going to start off really, really quietly. And then by the end, we're going to be really, really loud, almost to the point of shouting. You with me? Well, Jackie Tricker's with me. Anybody else with me? Excellent. So I'm going to say the words in orange and yellow, brown, whatever that is. uh, And you're going to say the words in white. So remember, starting quietly, then we're going to build up. As we gather together today, Lord, we've come to meet with Good, that's good. As we put aside the things that distract us, Lord, come and meet with us. Good, we can start to go a bit sort of normal pitch now. As we give to you, well, I went a bit too loud myself then. As we give to you the things that worry us, Lord, come and meet with us. Getting a bit louder. As we forget about ourselves, Lord, come and meet with us. Even louder now. As we worship you with songs of praise, Lord, come and meet with us. Really, really loud now. As we welcome you here, Lord Jesus, Lord, come and meet with us. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can gather together this morning as your people and you come and meet with us in this place. Lord God, we pray that as we gather here, as we sing these songs, as we learn from your word, Lord, I just pray that you would meet with us in this place. In Jesus' almighty name, amen. Um, Just a few notices to bring to your attention. This is the the holiday season and uh, people have already set sail on their lovely holidays overseas and near and far and all that kind of stuff. Um, The church itself begins to get into a little bit of holiday mode, but that's good because uh, God commands us, doesn't he, to, to have a Sabbath. And uh, things in the church life are just going to slow down a little bit over this summer period. Just uh, just to say, um, I think on the notice sheet, it advertises that we're going to have a coffee morning this Saturday. Uh, We've decided we're we're not going to do that, um, just so that we give our our team of helpers who run that a little bit of a break. uh, And oh, thank you very much for that, darling. That's absolutely beautiful. Um, it's just so that we give our, our team a little bit of a break. Um, also, there's not going to be a breakfast church um, in August, um, so that will be the third Sunday in August that we're not going to have breakfast church, uh, just so that we can remain together uh, and, and have some more of these uh, interactive services. Uh, and also a number of other people are going to come uh, and are going to open God's word to us. Now, um, whenever we have services like this, we did this last week, but uh, we didn't have the the treat element of it. Uh, We're going to go now and we're going to greet with a sweet. Now, I just heard a couple of audible, oh, (laughs) David, come on. What I would like you to do is to get up onto your feet 
and to go and greet somebody that you don't know with a sweet and say, it's wonderful to see you here today. Can you do that for me? And maybe have a little chat. So get up onto your feet and go and greet with a sweet. Okay, if you could make your way back to your seats. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Half a second. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, don't you feel a little bit better for having done that? And it might be that actually you didn't feel like you wanted to do that, but I'm sure it has been really nice to be welcomed and someone to say hello to you, uh, and you feel better for having done that. That actually ties in very nicely um, with what we're doing in this service, the thing that we're going to be focusing on. Because actually, sometimes God asks us to do things that we really don't want to do, but actually we find that when we do them, actually... His name is glorified, and we see amazing things, incredible things happen. Now, one of the things that we often do uh, when we have a family service is we learn a memory verse. Now, the memory verse today doesn't really link directly with the story that we're going to be looking at, but actually I think some of the theme of it does. So if you could just put it up uh, for me, the, the, the game, please, um, Jacob. So we're going to play a little bit of a game before we learn our memory verse. And the, and the game is this. It's a simple question. What is smaller? What is smaller? Now, I'm going to ask you a number of questions. There's going to be a number of comparisons. And I want you to tell me what is the smallest. And we're going to have a group vote and see what people come up with. So the first one for me, please. So what is smaller? So the one on this side is Ben Nevis. And the one on the right side is Snowden. What is smallest? So not largest, what is smallest? So hands up if you think Snowden is the smallest. Hands up if you think Snowden is the smallest. That's, even if you didn't think it was the smallest, you're probably starting to think it's the smallest now. Hands up if you think Ben Nevis is the smallest. A few people, well, there's one, oh, thank you, Andrew, he's going to be defiant, good man, we like people to stick out from the crowd. So, Snowdon is the highest mountain in Wales, it stands at 1,085 metres above sea level. Ben Nevis is the highest mountain in the entire British Isles, standing at 1,345 metres, so Snowdon is the smallest. Give yourselves a round of applause if you did the right one. Okay, the next one. Right, well, we've had the World Cup, and um, I don't know about you, but I really got into this, and I was particularly fond in the World Cup of one player, Harry Maguire. Uh, he was, his nickname is Slabhead. Um, he was everything that I wanted to be when I was a footballer. It says a lot, really, doesn't it, that how talented I was. Um, now, I want, next to him, you've got a picture of John Stones. So on the left is Harry Maguire. On the right is John Stones. In terms of height, who is smallest? So hands up if you think Harry Maguire is the smallest. Hands up if you think Harry Maguire is the smallest. Oh, is there, it's a little bit, there's a few people. I'm not saying in terms of the picture. I mean in reality. <laughs> Okay, hands up if you think John Stones. Not sure. Hands up if you really don't care. <laughs> fair play. Fair play. Fair play. Um, Jacob, I think the next one actually put, gives their heights. So if you could put that one up. So yeah, so Harry Maguire is 1 meter 94, which is, you know, if you want to do it properly, 6 foot 3 and a half. Uh, John Stones, one meter 88, which is six foot two. So John Stones is smaller. So give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> You've got that right. Uh, next one, please, Jacob. Now, this one has always... I'll ignore the bit at the bottom. This one, this one has always fascinated me in terms of what is smaller, an M&M &M 
or a skittle? An M&M or a skittle? Okay. Hands up if you think it's an M&M. In terms of size, I, I should say in terms of diameter, width diameter. What is smallest? So hands up if you think an M&M is smaller. A few people. Hands up if you think it's a Skittle. Okay. I have had to conduct a little bit of research into this. So um, if you could put the next one up. The internet, as in Wikipedia, was very helpful uh, because it listed the size of an M&M which is apparently 1.04 centimeters, and there's actually a picture on the internet. So that's the average size. Um, there was nowhere on the internet that said anything about the size of Skittles. So this morning, I've had to actually go out uh, and buy some Skittles. So I've got some here, and I've also got my ruler. Could someone come and measure the size of a Skittle for me? Ella, do you want to come and measure this for me? All right. Um, I also learned a fascinating thing. You think all Skittles taste different flavors. They don't. They're all the same flavor. There you go. I don't know if that's true. Oh, that's a bit of a manky one. There we go. All right, can you measure that one for me? So if we put it all the way across. Okay. What's that saying? Yeah, what's it saying? A little bit next to it. 1.3. Okay, we have measured one, and uh, I can ratify it is 1.3 centimeters. So if you said M&M, you won that one. So they are smaller. You can have those if you want them. <laughs> Your mum's going to thank me later. <laughs> okay, last one. Thank you, Jacob. Ooh. What do you think? Do you want to have that one as well, darling? Fingers here. There we go. What do you think is smaller, a tiger or a lion? So hands up if you think a tiger. See, this is where it's. See, this is where it's complex. This is where it's a little bit. We'll say. We'll say wait. We'll say wait. We shall say wait. So hands up if you think a tiger is smaller in weight. And I have to say, this is a Amur tiger. We're, we're not, because there's various different breeds. and uh, so, so the biggest tiger that you can get versus the biggest lion that you can get, because there's different breeds. Um, so hands up if you think tiger is being the smallest in terms of weight. A few people. Hands up if you think it's a lion. Okay. Interesting. So, uh, Jacob, can you put the next slide up? For me? So, if we were looking at terms of length and size, actually, they're quite similar in terms of width and things like that. In terms of weight, the Siberian tiger, which is the largest subspecies of the subspecies, subseries, subspecies of the Panthera genus. No, not a. Anthropomologist, is that that word? <laughs> oh, just <laughs> don't be clever. Don't be clever. Stick to what you know. A tiger can weigh up to 800 pounds or 360 kilos, whilst the largest African lions weigh up to 550 pounds which is about 250 kilograms. So I suppose actually you can notice that. If you look at the tiger, it just, it's slightly... Why? Yeah, it's a bit chunkier, isn't it? It's got a bit of beef about it, whereas lion looks more impressive. So the smallest is the lion. Okay, why are we doing this? Because actually, this is, it all comes down to our memory verse this morning, which is this. Can you put it up for me, please, Jacob? So it's a, this is something that Jesus t tells us. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to here, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Should we say that together? If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to here, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. 
And a bit later on, we're going to find out how that applies to the person we're going to be looking at in our story this morning. We're going to see how that verse plays out. That if we have faith the size of a mustard seed, nothing can be impossible, particularly when God is with us. And, and we're going to help do this by looking at our first character that we're going to be studying throughout this series on Old Testament characters who, who actually had to have faith that God was going to use him. But to help us out, rather than me tell you about him, we're going to watch a short video. When the director contacted me and shared something of his vision for this project, I, I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, to be part of such an exciting movie on, on the basis of a life of a historical character, you know, it's, it's what every actor dreams of. And, you know, I looked forward to it with much relish. When you come on productions like this, uh, you always get absolutely fantastic wardrobe departments, you get great makeup artists on set, and we were really well served. I mean, that they assured me in uh, pre-production that uh, what, what it was going to look like on the viewfinder you know, would be a little bit better post-production. Um, but, I, you know, I'm quite pleased with, with the way it came out. I don't look like a man who's just wearing a tea cloth on his head. When we were filming, um, I was made aware that the production didn't have a lot of money um, and that, that there were going to be some cutbacks in areas of special effects. Um, I never thought that the bush that I was talking to that was covered in tissue paper wouldn't be replaced in some way by CGI, however basic that was. Um, but you know what, I, I still think it works. Um, I, th I think you get the real uh, ferociousness of the fire. It's not consuming the bush, is it? But um, it's remaining intact. And, and I, it means that actually it's quite a believable sight when you see it. The burning bush. It always gets their attention. Moses. Moses, it's me. God. Here I am. There are some who say that your acting is wooden. Um, there are some who say, oh, I don't even call that acting. Um, those are less kind people. Um, what, what I just try to do is to give 
an honest and truthful uh, expression of my character that I'm trying to play. Uh, in this case, Moses. I mean, a bush was talking to him. You know, that, that, that's some pretty scary stuff. And I like to think I did justice to that emotion that he was feeling at that time. Moses, I have something for you in the burning bush. Pick up the envelope. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's, 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 that's some handwriting, God. I mean, you got my name right and everything. That's fantastic. I mean, but it says Agent Moses. You know, I'm, I'm no special agent. You know, I'm just a shepherd. You know, I, I don't do anything special. I mean, I suppose you could could say I'm a detective in some way, but you know, I, I, I sometimes find lost sheep, but I'm not really... Uh, Open it, oh, Moses. I'm, I'm, sorry, sorry. Would you like me to read it to you? Oh, yes, please. I was I was never very good at reading at school. You see, you see I've, I've always had a little bit of a problem with words. Moses, are you going to let me read it or not? Oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm ready. I need you to listen carefully. My people, the Hebrews, are being kept as slaves at the hands of Pharaoh, who is treating them very badly. They're miserable and suffering, Moses. But I have heard their prayers, and I have to do something to help them. I will lead them to a new land where they have everything they need, far away from Pharaoh. Yeah, that, that, that is terrible. Um, but c good luck with that. I hope things get sorted out, okay? Moses. Yeah? I'm going to need you to help me, Agent Moses. I've already told you, God, you know, I'm no agent. I'm just a shepherd. And I'm not particularly even good at that. I've already lost two sheep today, for goodness sake. No, Moses. You're my agent. I want you to go to Egypt and speak with Pharaoh. I want you to tell him to let my people go. Some of the writing of the dialogue was pretty poor. Um, I mean, there's not a lot written in the Bible, really, about this story. And, and so I suppose there's, a, there's a, a little bit of artistic license going on. So, so we as actors have had to, to ad-lib a few lines here and there. Um, I, I'm, I'm quite happy with what I've contributed. Um, as an artist, you try to bring a little bit of something uh, to every single role that you play. And, and, I, and I think that I, I've, I've created a, a good character of Moses throughout this film. I can't believe it. Is he kidding? Me? Go to Pharaoh? Free the Hebrews? I'm not, not cut out for this. I mean, there must be so many reasons why I shouldn't be the one to go and do such an important job. I mean, first of all, who am I to go to Pharaoh and say, you've got to let the, the Hebrews free? Now, I can't do that. I'm not important enough. I will be with you. You know, what if they don't believe me? I mean, what if the Hebrews don't even believe me? I will be with you. You know, I am quite slow of speech and tongue. You know, what if I say the wrong thing? I will be with you. Please send somebody else, Lord. Moses, I will be with you. Okay, God. I'm going to do it. I don't know what I'm going to say. I don't know what I'm going to do. But nothing is impossible for you. And I know you'll be with me. Moses. Moses, I promise. I will be with you. God said, I will be with you.
And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. God had a big plan for Moses. He chose Moses to set his people free. He chose Moses to perform miracles. He chose Moses to speak to Pharaoh and to lead the people out of Egypt. And Moses knew that he wasn't a good speaker. He was full of doubts and worry. But as we heard in that short, terrible film, God promised that he would be with him. You you see that phrase, don't you, that when uh, God describes himself, when he's asked what his name is, it says, I am who I am. And that can also be uh, read as, I will be what I will be. But it shows us for what God is. God is active, dynamic. He is involved with us. And when it says in the Bible, I am has sent me to you, the exact words in some translations is this, I will be with you. Moses had faith as small as a mustard seed, but he didn't believe that God could possibly use him to do such amazing things. But God did. And Moses led his people to freedom, not through any power of his own, but because God was with him. Praise God that he is bigger than us and that with him anything is possible. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are so much bigger than us. Lord, and that if we just have faith as small as a mustard seed... You are faithful to us. Lord, help us to trust in you and in your plans for each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, sometimes God calls us to go on special missions. Sometimes God asks things for us. It might be that we have that opportunity to pray for a friend who needs it. It might be that we have that opportunity to tell somebody about Jesus. And quite often, we can sometimes look for a ticket out. Now, underneath some of the chairs, there are some of these tickets out. There's five of them in total. And I just wonder, if you've got a ticket under your chair, it's quite funny seeing everyone put their their heads down looking for it. There might be a few dotted about. If you've got one, can you just wave it in the air? And what I'll do is I'll come and bring the microphone, and you can read it out for me. So... Some of the things that might stop us from doing God's mission. So can you read that for me, Andrew? People will laugh at me. Yeah. Who, who sometimes feels like that? Actually, if you, if you do things, maybe if you offer to pray for somebody, you're worried that they might laugh at you. Helen. What if I make a mistake? Yeah, what if I say the wrong thing? You know, what if I don't say what I need to say? What if I don't know everything? Someone else would do a much better job. Yeah, we often feel like that, don't we? You know, why can't you use, use somebody else? They'd be much better than me. I'm not clever enough to speak to people about Jesus. Lovely, thank you. And then Susan. I'm too shy. Nobody would ever listen to me. Yeah, we often feel like that as well. I mean, I'm, I'm not one of these people who would stand at the front and and do things that you're doing. You know, I'm quite a shy person. Um, And these are some of the reasons that we can give. And sometimes the, the idea of going on a mission to serve God seems much harder, particularly if you have to carry around some of those things. But like Moses, we have to trust God, that our faith is big enough and that God can use us even though we're not perfect. God can and wants to use each of us. We just need to let him. Now, I've said this before. Noah was a drunk. Abraham was too old. Isaac was a daydreamer. Jacob was a liar. Leah was ugly. Not our Leah. (laughs) And Jacob's, yeah, I don't think Jacob's much of a liar. (laughs) Joseph was abused. Moses had a stutter. Gideon was afraid. We're going to learn about him next week. Samson was a flirt. Rahab was a prostitute. Jeremiah and Timothy were too young. David was an adulterer and a murderer. Elijah was suicidal. Isaiah preached naked. 
Thank the Lord you don't have to put up with that every week, eh? <laughs> There's always a first time. <laughs> I don't think I'm ever going to do that. But, you know, God might prove me wrong. Jonah ran from God. Job went bankrupt. Peter denied Jesus. The disciples fell asleep while praying. The Samaritan woman was divorced. Zacchaeus was too small. Paul was too religious. Timothy had an ulcer. Lazarus was dead. Think again. God can use us in so many ways. And if we could have our memory verse back up, please, Jacob. Brilliant. Do we think we can say this and fill in the blanks as we go through? I'm going to test you. After three. <coughs> One, two, three. If you have faith as small as a I don't know if you've ever seen the size of a mustard seed. There should be a picture. I was hoping to get loads uh, and for everyone to hold one, uh, but I thought that probably might end in tears for our cleaning. Um, So what I want us to do, we're going to pray together now. And what I want you to do, I want you to imagine your... Yeah, Jackie's pleased with me for that. (laughs) What I would like you to do, I want you to imagine that you're holding, you're clutching onto a mustard seed. Imagine it's in the palm of your hand and hold on to it tightly. And as we do that, I'm going to pray for us. It says pray. Thank you, Lord, that we can be free from fear and doubt when we're serving you. Thank you that you chose us and you love us just the way we are. Thank you for the honor it is to serve such a great and mighty God. Holy Spirit, please take my tiny faith and use it to move mountains. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen.